and thank you for joining me. You're here with data science teacher Brandon and we're going to go over a data analysis project of superstores or supermarkets and analyze kind of the customer details and the overall statistics of the store. Okay, so we'll start off with importing the data and really just to practice making sure that we remember what our aliases are, the proper aliases are for our import libraries. So NumPy as np, pandas as pd, and plt, or sorry, matplotlib.pyplot as plt. So run that, and then in the next cell, I have this in my, the CSV file in my reservoir. It is still a CSV file, so we need to read underscore CSV, and this is just going to import it directly from my reservoir. And you could go to this link and see if you want to look at it, it's not super interesting, but that will allow you to import the data directly from my drive. Okay. So we'll go through that. And then first kind of step that good good to make check, good to make sure so you don't find kind of unexpected things later on. We'll do null value is null and sum. So dot is null will return a data frame of trues and false values, and then sum will just add up all the trues, which is equal to one, and then you can see here, it's only summing up zeros, which is false if we get all zeros. So there's no null values in our data set today, which makes it a little bit easier. We can get right into the analysis. Okay, okay, so on to the univariate analysis. And what I like here is to start with a loop. So we'll go for eat in df.col. So it's going to loop through the whole, all of the list of all of the column names and then check if that eat, so if the column name at the time is equal to d type objects, I'm going to have to do a certain type of plot, which in pandas this will be value counts, value counts, value underscore counts, dot, and then so this returns a series of a count of each value. And this is going to, we're going to plot this and we're going to do kind equals bar. Okay. In the next one, so we'll do else. So if it's not an object, it's in, in this data set, it's going to be a numeric feature. So we only need to do a simple kind of logic statement for this. We just say else. So if it's not an object, then it is a number. And so we're going to plot and we'll do kind is equal to hist. Okay. And then another thing that's really important is because pandas plot won't specifically tell you which, which feature it is you're plotting. So we want to make sure that we put the title and then we're going to do title and we'll go font size font size equals to 20. And then because we're doing this in a loop, we don't want to plot our pictures all on top of each other. We want them to kind of be one after another, like we see here. So we need to show, we need to print our plot each time we run through this loop. So it'll plot one of the plots, put the title, show it, and then get on to the next one. So it'll all come out like this. Just put this to make sure this works. And you can see here we get a distribution. So this is really good. I, I think this is really valuable just in understanding your data, really give you a good sense of really the distributions of your data. We, we don't have the spreadsheet in front of us, so we need to go through all of the data that we can. Okay, so here we go define area binning. And so I did this, so we want to figure average total total and average and total sales by size. So we don't have a size column in our data frame, so we need to make a size column. So I'll plot this. I'm going to plot the area, the store area, kind hist, title, so it's giving me a good distribution. This will enlighten me to how I'm going to bin this. We would call bucketize or binning my continuous variable so that it is a category. So we're gonna make a small, a large, small, and medium category for our store area and kind of use that to inspect it. Uh, this is just a theory that size makes a big difference in how efficient the store would be. You think of Costco, very efficient store versus kind of the small little convenience store on the corner is not as efficient and the prices are higher because of that. Okay. And so I, I was just thinking that might relate to this analysis in some way. So what we're going to do here, we're going to go if 
x. So we're going to be using this in dot apply, right? So x is going to be the value in the row each time. It's going to iterate, essentially iterate through all the rows. It applies a recursive function, so it'll apply it to every row in the data set. And then we'll go if x, so x will be the value in the row at the time. So if x is great, so mix things up right there. So if x if x is greater than 1800 and there's none on the right side what we're going to do just to make sure that we don't forget we want to put our colons there so if x is greater than 1800 we're going to assign value to large else if value is less than 1200 less than 1200 we're going to do the same thing we're going to go we're going to assign value to small else and the second none right here is just to remember to put the colon so else value equals medium and then we're going to return return value so i'm just noticing here you can see these squiggly red things oh, i must have made a mistake and colab is great for this because it instantly highlights i had two colons right here so we only need one colon to finish off each line of the, the if statements okay so we'll do that and then to apply this function we're just going to apply it across one column at the time so we don't need to worry about the access the direction we're going to apply it across we're just going to take the value out of the row and it's going to be x and it's going to be greater than less than and we'll assign and we're going to return a value that is a label large small medium and we're going to assign that to store value plot the store counts of this so now we have the store size, we have medium, small, and large. And so medium makes up the bulk of our data set, which is kind of the middle range, the bulk of the middle of the data set. Okay. So now we can inspect by that. So we'll go group by store sales. And here we're going to do the average. So we want to do mean, and then we want to plot this. Okay. So that we've done. So plotting a group by function you can see we get roughly the same average sales per stores which is surprising with the small medium and large average roughly the same amount of stores i was very surprised actually these stores uh that i found in this data set is a little bit different than i would have expected uh at least stores in canada to work so maybe this is a little bit more how stores work in your country okay so here we're going to group by again store size store sales we're going to sales we're going to go sum this time and then we're going to plot this. Okay. Okay. So here we're going to get into making some functions. So we're going to use the same the same thing that we did again, just to create the store size column. We're going to do that again for lots of our columns. So we want sales per square foot. It's a little bit different because we're going to need two things. We're going to need to create a calculation to return that as sales per square foot. So we need two variables. We need the sales and we'll need the square foot of our store to be able to accomplish this. Okay. So here what we're going to do is we're going to define sales per store area. And don't forget to put the colon after that. And we're going to go value equals. And so this X is going to be the row at the time. So here we're giving it two values. So it's going to be x and we're going to index into our x position so that will be x1 sales per square foot so we're going to do the square foot second that will be first so we're going to do the square foot first so that will be zero so one divided by zero x1 position store sales divided by store area okay and we're going to go, we're going to assign that to value and we're going to return value right here. And then we want to make sure we return this value right here. Okay. So we can see we have square foot DF equal to, and the, the difference here is we're, we're taking in two columns. It changes things a little bit. It's an easy, I, I made this mistake many times, so that's good to practice. So apply. So we're going to apply the function we just created and we want to define the access argument. So zero means across the rows one means across the columns kind of horizontal so if we're going to go horizontally we want to take the row out and we want to take the data in the, the time 
So we have axis one, and this will apply it across the row of the two columns that we're selecting. And we'll that and kind of just to paste. So we can see here, we have some outliers on the right hand side. We have some stores that really sell a lot per square foot, and we have some that really, really don't. So we have a good distribution, and we can inspect that now by the store size. So does it really have something to do? So we're going to group by store size, sales per square foot. We're going to get the mean, and then we're going to plot this. And we're going to do kind equals bar and title equals average sales. Okay. So here we go. So we actually see the average sales for large in terms of sales per square foot is actually very low. The sales per square foot is very low and the sales per square foot is very high in the small. So really to me, it seems in terms of square foot, the small stores are very efficient. So I'm writing notes about all of these right here. Okay, in the next one, we're gonna go sales per customer. Cause I wonder like big stores, I would have thought big stores would sell more per customer. So I'm uh, very interested to see if that was that theory that I had in my, that I thought of is actually true. So that's a good, good kind of lesson is have a theory and then test it. So my theory was that sales per customer would depend on the size of the store. And so let's see if that was true. So here we have sales per customer. We're going to be taking in two values just like we did in the last one. So daily customer count divided by store sales. And when you take both of those in, we're going to assign that to value and we're going to return turn the value after we go position two so store sales divided by position one which is the daily customer count so sales divided by customer count and we're going to put return there and it should be putting return the value of this this is going to be basically it's going to calculate on the row and it's going to return that to another row and it's going to iterate through the whole data frame, which is a recursive function which is what a pi does so we're going to then put the sales per square foot uh, Oh, I was noticing here that I have a little bit of a spelling mistake. Okay, so sales per customer. And we're just need to make sure that we apply axis equals one. And we'll put our function in here. So we say sales per customer. And this mean plot, and it's going to be kind. And then don't forget to put the df in group by. Okay, so df.group by store sales customers, sales per customer. And we're plotting the mean of each one of those. And what's really interesting is that really the size of the store didn't really have to do with how much the customer bought. So it really surprised me. I would have thought bigger stores would mean customers would buy more on average, but that turns out not to be the truth. And a question would be, why is that the case? And that would be a good business insight to share with your business partners. Okay. So here we're going to go traffic per square foot. Okay. So now we have daily customer count. And we're going to do store area this time. So I just left this one for us to fill in, very similar to the one up above. So then you can see here that the small number is a lot less customers per store area. So this is a proportion, right, per square foot. So we're getting a lot less per square foot. And so bigger stores are bigger. You would actually almost expect this to be the inverse where the larger stores had more per square foot, okay, or had less per square foot because it was a bigger store, less, more, more place to fill, and it would be the opposite. It's really interesting finding these kind of co contrary to what we would expect type of examples, and that's that's really you have a theory. It should be this. Well, let's actually go and see if that's the truth, and that's really what we want to do is having a theory guides your analysis, and then your goal is to prove if that is true or not. So the next thing we want to do is inspect, inspect for outliers. Really wanted to see how many outliers there were in the data set. So we're going to do it again in a loop here. So we're going to go four feet in df.columns. But because we have all of the columns, we don't really care about the outliers and the store ID and store size, which is a category column now. So we couldn't even look at that. So what we need to do is if feet not in, the list of features. So no features, I'm not a very creative name, but no features. And we're going to go, if it's not in this one, then we'll plot this. So it's, this is checking to make sure it's not one of these two, and then it will plot everything else. And then after that, we're going to go kind equals box. Okay, kind equals box. Let's make sure we're going to do 
these two cells together. Okay, awesome. I just noticed, I wanted to really focus on outliers here. And so I was noticing that there were some outliers. So sales per square foot was above 77. It was really where there's outliers and you can inspect the graph to get a little bit more detail on this. And then sales per customer was greater than 0.3. So these are, I was really looking for the ones that were outliers in both of these situations. So the sales per customer and the sales per square foot. I wanted to see really if there's one store that really excelled in both of them. So I put this into a dual logic statement down here. Okay, so what we want to do here is, so you can delete these two nuns. What we need to do, oops, what we need to do for each side of a logic statement is wrap it in parentheses. So if I, if I select it and I hit the left hand parentheses, then it will just fill the whole thing. So you can see here, I have it now wrapped in the parentheses and I want to go and, and I want to do the same thing here. I want to wrap this other logic statement in parentheses. So you need to do this when you're doing two or dual logical indexing, or more than two, more than one logical indexing, I just need to wrap them in parentheses. And so when I wrap these sales, we get the highlights of the, the stores that were really kind of the uh, standout stores, stores that have a good sales per customer and a good sales per square feet. So these would be the list of your stores that you really want to replicate that would be really valuable in learning from these stores and then again, doing something else similar. Okay, so very good, it's excellent. Okay, so great job. And here we have a summary of the insights. I think it's really good. So all those insights that we collected all along the way, I just collect them down here at the bottom. And then I start mixing them, I start organizing them. Maybe I could think of interesting ways to combine them, maybe interesting suggestions for our business partners. This is really the place. So think of your analysis as just collecting insights. And then think at the end, you're gonna put those insights together to create interest business strategies to provide valuable kind of information that your business might be missing. Okay, so thank you very much for joining me today and I will see you next time.